Welcome back to another video brought to you by ISCA Engineering. We're continuing our series in motors and control systems. In the last video we covered ladder diagrams. In this video we will be looking at motor classification as well as DC and AC motor connections. Before we dive into these topics hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on our future videos. And while you're at it hit the thumbs up. So let's get started. For over a hundred years, electric motors have been an important part of our industrial and commercial economy. Most industrial machines in use today are driven by some type of motor. In order for industries to properly work, a well-designed, installed, and maintained motor control system is needed. Motors are classified according to the type of power they use, AC or DC, and also by their principle of operation. As you can see in this slide, the family tree of motors is quite large. Here in the United States, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, also known as IEEE, are in charge of setting the standards for motor testing and also how it needs to be tested. On the other hand, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, also known as NEMA, are the ones who set the standards for motor performance and the motor classifications. And lastly, motors are installed using Article 430 of the NEC, National Electric Code. Let's look at the DC motor. DC motors are used in industrial applications because their speed-torque relationship can be easily changed. The speed of the DC motor can easily be controlled down to zero and then immediately accelerate in the opposite direction. Also, in emergency situations, the DC motor can supply over five times its rated torque without stalling. Dynamic braking can be obtained when using DC motors. This is important on applications that need quick stops. This eliminates the need for or reduces the size of a mechanical brake. These symbols that you see here are used to identify the basic parts of a DC compound motor. The rotating part of the motor is called the armature. The stationary part, which contains the series and shunt field winding, is called the stator. A1 and A2 are the armature leads. S1 and S2 are the series field leads. And F1 and F2 are the shunt field leads. For DC motors, the kind of field excitation is what distinguishes one type of DC motor from another. The type of armature has nothing to do with the motor classification. There are three general types of DC motor, and they are classified according to their field excitation. So let's look at the different types. Here we have the shunt DC motor diagram. The shunt DC motor uses a high resistance shunt field winding that is made up of many turns of fine wire. As you can see here, the shunt is connected in parallel with the armature. Next we have the series DC motor. A series DC motor uses very low resistance series field winding. The winding is made up of very few turns of heavy wires which are connected in series with the armature. Finally, the compound DC motor. The compound DC motor uses a combination of the series and shunt field windings as shown in the example. Here are connections for clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. The rotation is determined by looking at the commutator end. Standards require manufacturers to add marking to the motor leads. This helps when making connections and a certain rotation is required. It also reduces the chances of improper rotation that could result in unsafe operation or damage. The tags are used only on leads that require connections from outside circuits. The direction of rotation of a DC motor depends on the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of current flow in the armature. To reverse the rotation of the motor, either the direction of the field or the direction of the current flow is reversed. If both the direction of the field and the direction of current flow are reversed at the same time, the motor rotation will not change and the motor will continue to rotate in the same direction. Now let's move on and look at the AC motor connections. The AC induction motor is the dominant motor technology in use today. Over more than 90% of motors that are in use today are AC motors. AC motors are available in single phase and three phase configuration. They vary in sizes, ranging from a fraction of a horsepower to tens of thousands of horsepower. AC motors can run at fixed speed or their speed can be adjusted by using an adjustable speed drive or variable frequency drive. 
Some of the most common AC motor speeds are 900, 1200, 1800, or 3600 RPM. The most commonly used AC motor is known as the squirrel cage motor. The name comes from the aluminum or copper squirrel cage embedded within the iron laminate of the rotor. Note that there is no physical electrical connection to the squirrel cage. The current in the rotor is induced by the rotating magnetic field of the stator. Most of the single phase motors are small and are made in fractional horsepower sizes for 120 to 240 VAC. There are several types of single phase motors, but they are basically the same, except for the way of starting. The split phase motor is mostly used for medium size applications. The motor has a start and main, or run winding, which are both energized when the motor is started. The starting winding then produces a phase difference to start the motor and is switched out by the centrifugal switch as the running speed is approached. Once the motor reaches about 75% of its rated full load speed, the starting winding is disconnected from the circuit. The sizes for the split phase motor ranges up to just about half horsepower. The most popular applications where these type of motors are used are in fans, blowers, and in your typical home appliances such as washers and dryers. They are also found in some tools such as small saws or drill presses where the load is applied after the motor has reached its operating speed. To reverse the motor, the leads to the starting or main windings can be reversed, but not both. It is most common to reverse the start winding leads. In dual voltage split phase motors, the running windings are split into two sections and can be connected to operate from 120 to 240 VAC. When it's connected to 120 volts, the two run windings are connected in parallel and when it's connected to 240 volts, the two run windings are connected in series. For high voltage, the start winding is connected at one line to the midpoint of the run winding and for low voltage is connected across the supply lines. Doing this will ensure that all the windings get the proper voltage that they were designed to operate at, which is 120 volts. In order to reverse the direction of rotation of the dual voltage split phase motor, the two start winding leads are swapped. The split phase motor is designed to operate with 120 slash 240 volts. It's better to use a higher voltage when it's available. The split phase motor will consume the same amount of power and will produce the same amount of horsepower regardless of what voltage is used. However, using the higher voltage cuts the current in half. This allows us to use smaller conductors and also reduces the line power losses. Many single phase motors use capacitors to start. The capacitor is connected in series with one of the stator windings. This optimizes the phase difference between the start and run windings for starting. Using a capacitor allows for a higher starting torque than a split phase motor can produce. There are three types of capacitor motors. There is the capacitor start. In the capacitor start motor, the capacitor phase is only in the circuit when starting. There is also the permanent split capacitor. In this type of motor, the capacitor phase is in the circuit for both the starting and running. Lastly, there is the two value capacitor. These motors have two capacitors with different capacitance. One is used for the starting and a different one is used for running. This motor is also known as capacitor start, capacitor run motor. A permanent split capacitor motor is lower in cost compared to the capacitor start motors. This motor is used in some hard to start applications such as small compressors, pump, air conditioners, and blowers. The most commonly used AC motor in industrial and commercial applications is of course the three phase. When needing large amounts of horsepower, it's best to use a three phase motor instead of a single phase motor. The thing is, the single phase large horsepower motors are very inefficient compared to a three phase motor. In addition, single phase motors are not self starting on their run windings, as are the three phase motors. All three-phase motors are constructed internally with a number of individually wound coils. Regardless of how many individual coils there are, the individual coils will always be wired together, either in series or parallel, to produce three distinct windings. The windings are referred to as Phase A, Phase B, and Phase C. All three-phase motors are wired so that the phases are connected in either Y or Delta configuration as shown in this example. 
It's a common practice for manufacturers to produce motors that can operate at different voltages. And the most common multiple voltage ratings for three-phase motors is 208-230-460 volts. It is a good idea to always check the motor specification or nameplate for the proper voltage rating and wiring diagram. This example shows the typical terminal identification and connection table for a 9-lead dual-voltage Y-connected three-phase motor. One end of each phase is permanently connected to other phases. Each phase coil, A, B, C, is divided into two equal parts and connected either series for high voltage or parallel for low voltage. Motors are supplied with a wiring diagram to help the engineer and or electrician to ensure that the right connection is made for the desired voltage. In order to reverse the direction of rotation of any three-phase motor, simply interchange any of the three main power leads to the motor. The most common leads to interchange are L1 and L3. Care should be taken when wiring a three-phase motor as the direction of rotation is not known. It is a good practice to wire the motor and test the rotation before making a permanent connection. In certain applications, unintentional reversal of motor rotation can cause serious damage. In this case, phase failure and phase reversal relays are used to protect motor, machines, and personnel from hazard open phase or reversed phase conditions. The number of poles and the frequency of the applied power are factors that determine the speed of an AC induction motor. By using a VFD or variable frequency drive, the speed of the motor can be varied. The VFD varies the frequency of the voltage that's applied to the motor. This means that the lower the frequency of the motor, the lower its RPM will be. For a standard induction motor, it can be badly affected when it's operated by a VFD. Inverter duty and vector duty are a class of motors that are capable of being operated by a VFD. In this class of motors, Low temperature rise is accomplished with good insulation systems, additional active material, and or an external cooling fan. This allows the motor to stay cool at low speeds. One type of inverter motor is shown here. Part of this particular design includes an independent cooling fan to cool down the motor so that it can operate within a wide speed range without any heating problem. This concludes the motor terminal connections. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. In the next video, we will be looking at the manual and magnetic motor starter. Follow us on Instagram at ISCA underscore engineering for daily posts on electricity, controls, automation, and much more. Thanks for watching.